All right, what's going on guys? Beastars episode six, Blurred Vision, Dream or Reality. Before we start this episode review, I just released a Beastars episode one abridged episode. So if you guys could check that out, give it a like, give me a subscribe, I would appreciate that. But let's do it. All right, so this episode begins in the human world. Uh, we find out from a news report that an herbivore died. It looks like one of the carnivores got aggressive and killed the herbivore for its meat. So Lagoshi and some of his carnivore buddies are watching this. They're a little freaked out by the situation. And Lagoshi proceeds to leave the room. And in the process, he sees one of the new wolves getting picked on. It turns out it's a freshman named Juno. Now Lagoshi intervenes in the situation. He kind of is a little hesitant at first. He's not sure if he should make a move. But he's like, you know, this isn't right. I should protect her. Uh, so he pretends that he's the wolf's brother. So the other guys get scared. Obviously, Lagoshi's a huge, imposing wolf with a lot of muscle. Uh, so they're like, ah, we really don't want to get involved in an altercation. Even though they don't know that Lagoshi is basically a pacifist. He's really not going to do anything aggressive or fight them. But they kind of take him at his word and they leave the situation. Lagoshi then has a small conversation with Juno, the wolf. And he finds out that she also is going to be working in the drama club. So it looks like we'll be seeing a little bit more of Juno and Lagoshi moving forward. If I had to say, I would guess that Juno probably feels a little smitten for Lagoshi. She definitely seemed impressed by him by saving her in that situation. And, you know, he's an upperclassman too. So, I mean, that's sort of natural. We'll have to see how Lagoshi handles this moving forward. We then move on to the drama club. Uh, we find out that four of the carnivores are gonna be going to town and that none of the herbivores are allowed to leave the school premises. The reason being because of the recent news report where the carnivore killed their herbivore. So they all have to stay inside. They're not allowed to leave. And uh, Lewis makes an interesting comment here. He's like, you know, carnivores, you know, are very aggressive creatures. And when they get the taste of blood, they basically lose all sense of control. So it's best for us to stay on campus. But then he gives a little warning to the carnivores that will be going to the uh, outer world. He says, be sure not to visit the black market, which Lewis is fully aware that Bill has been blood doping all this time. So he probably already has an inkling that Bill might want to go to the black markets uh, to get some meat. And he knows that Lagoshi still has those feral instincts. He's seen a few glimpses here and there. So he knows that Lagoshi, you know, especially someone who has very little control over his feral instincts would not be the ideal person to go to the black market. He might do something that he would regret for the rest of his life. But then afterwards, uh, they go to town and Lagoshi is very surprised at first. It looks like a lot of the carnivores and herbivores are getting along with one another. They seem to be living in a peaceful harmony. There's no sort of aggressiveness. Everyone just seems to be coexisting in a very egalitarian sort of way. So Lagoshi's like, is this really what it's like? But later on, they happen to stumble upon that black market. And uh, oh boy, uh, Lagoshi happens to run into this, uh, this hobo who's living on the street. And, uh, you know, he just needs some money, uh, presumably maybe for some booze or some drugs. And to do that, he's willing to give up his fingers. <laughs> you know, he's, he's got Lagoshi and he's like, hey, just bite one of my fingers. Just make it quick, though. You know, don't take too long. Just do it in one bite. <laughs> and, you know, he's offering like, I think it was like 70,000 yen for one finger. And Bill just jumps on this. Bill's like all for it. He's like, oh, OK. Yeah, if we pull our money together we could do this guys let's eat his fingers <laughs> you know that hobo he's only got 10 fingers i mean you know after he sells all his fingers how is he gonna get more booze is he gonna start letting people eat his ears and his genitals i mean oh boy but uh, obviously Lagoshi is not having it. He's getting in a bit of a emotional state where he can't control himself. And it's interesting because he has a flashback in this moment when Haru and him were hanging out the previous day together. And Haru asks him, hey, what do you think me as? 
And uh, Lagoshi's like, uh, I'm not sure. And she's like, oh, you know, that's okay. I That was kind of a weird question anyway. I think we'll be good friends. I, at first I'm like, oh, you know, she's just kind of playfully teasing him at the fact that, you know, he might love her and she's kind of picking up on that. But really, I mean, with the whole finger situation going on and with Lagoshi attacking her in the first episode, Lagoshi might be thinking about eating her. Even if it's not a conscious reaction, uh, it's something that his inner demon is always thinking about and it's affecting him at a personal level. And uh, this comes to the forefront when Lagoshi gets captured by a panda, a panda who turns out to be a therapist uh, who helps carnivores in the area who go to the black market and lose control themselves and give in to their feral instincts. He also mentions that carnivores who he has noticed doing this, who attack herbivores and eat them, end up getting this insatiable craze for meat. And because it's not acceptable in the society that they live in, they end up biting themselves or mutilating themselves or, you know, just taking all sorts of drastic actions. So this panda wants to make sure that this doesn't happen to Lagoshi. Because he thinks at first that Lagoshi's one of these crazed carnivores that attacked an herbivore. You know, he's displaying all the signs. But Lagoshi, you know, he's just kind of, he's out of sorts. You know, he's kind of a little over-emotional, we figured out from the past previous episodes. So, you know, he's kind of displaying symptoms that are out of character for most people. But then he kind of convinces the panda. I think the panda still has reservations about his intentions. And then they start talking about Haru. And uh, the panda's like, look, what do, you, what do you think is happening in those situations? Do, do you think you're becoming friends? Do you think you love her? And uh, at the end of their conversation, the panda hands him a nudie mag. One with a, a Playboy bunny on it. <laughs> but it's a real bunny. It's not a, it's not a human girl. And uh, he's like, look, you know, just wank to this, just jack to it, and uh, see if you like it. See if it's something that you can do. So the implication being, look, if you can't ejaculate to this bunny girl, then that means you don't have a fetish for small mammals, and you probably want to eat this girl. You don't want to, you're not actually in love with her. So we'll have to see how the Goshi handles that moving forward. Because uh, we're not really sure ourselves. I mean, I would like to believe that Lagoshi is a good intentioned individual and he just wants to be friends with Haru and possibly even lovers, but we don't know if he's going to be able to control that inner demon. It seems to be a very inseparable part of his being at this point. So that's going to be an interesting little conundrum that Lagoshi is going to have to face moving forward. And then the episode ends with Lagoshi meeting uh, the chicken dude, uh, Oba, I think was his name. And uh, he confesses to Lagoshi that, he, you know, he didn't partake in eating the fingers and um, that he, you know, he just felt weirded out by the situation because he has so many herbivore friends and he knows Lewis and it would just be weird. And I think this is a really important moment because I think a lot of people would say, well, if I was one of the carnivores in the show, I would just kind of give in to my urges here and there at the black market just to control myself and then I would be normal during the daytime. Like think about it this way, you're okay with eating cow meat, like I eat burgers and steak, you know, that's fine. But like, I don't have any like cows as pets, but you wouldn't eat dog meat because you know, people keep dogs as pets and they kind of consider them their friends and their personal pals. So it would be even weirder if you, if your dog talked to you <laughs> or, or your cow talked to you and you were friends and you had conversations, you know, it, it'd be weird to eat another cow or another dog. Uh, so I, that's an interesting little conundrum because they know sentient beings who are living meat, uh, but they can go to this black market anytime they want if they just wanna satiate their cravings. So 
We'll have to see how that's all sort of handled in the future. But I got to say, this was another good episode, guys. I love the level of exploration into Lagoshi. I mean, we're really fleshing him out as a character. And he's got a lot of interesting dilemmas going on. I mean, how is he going to handle the situation with Haru? Is he ever going to eat meat? Is he going to satiate his cravings just once in a while so he doesn't attack an herbivore and then, you know, end up like one of those patients that the panda was talking about? So a lot of interesting things going on in this episode, guys. Not much else to say. Another good one. Uh, I'll see you next week. Catch you on the flip side.